Hey guys, today we'll be talking about a general overview of macros. I'll be breaking it down for you so that it is simple and easy to understand and giving you all the basic information you never knew you needed about macros and hopefully answer any questions about macros that you have. A few questions we'll be going over today are, what are macros? Why should you count them? Should you count them? How to track them? And how many should you be eating? What's the difference between macros and calories? And what do they even have to do with one another? And some common mistakes to avoid as well. For all of your questions about weight loss, please wait patiently another four days on Monday when I release my step-by-step -step guide on how to lose weight. Thank you very much. If it's been four days since this video has launched already, I'll have the weight loss guide video linked in the description for your convenience. Thank you very much. This is probably not going to be the most fun video ever, but it will be very informative. So grab your notebooks and your pens, because honey, we're about to learn. Let's get this thing started. What are macros? The word macros is short for macronutrients. Macros consist of three categories, including protein, carbs, also known as carbohydrates and fats. And then there are multitudes of foods that fit into each macro category, which we will not be going into today. If you wanna know what all the foods that are considered carbs or all the foods that are considered protein or all our fats are, Google it, because the lists are literally endless. Anyways, consuming all three of these macros are essential to having a healthy, balanced diet and maintaining proper body functions. Macronutrients can be found in various amounts in every kind of food from apples to cake to fish. Cookies have macros, celery has macros, pop has macros, literally every kind of food has macros. Again, it's just that some foods might have high amounts of fat and low carbs, while others will be high in protein but low in carbs, etc, etc. The amount of balance of macronutrients in every kind of food will be different. Not all apples will have exactly the same macros, and not all fish will have exactly the same macros, and not even all cuts of steak will have exactly the same macros. Well, then how do we know what kinds of foods have what kinds of macros? Well, my friend, that brings us to our next point. Why count or track your macros? Tracking your macros allows you to know how much of each macronutrient you are consuming. And why do you need or want to know how much of each macronutrient you're eating? Because again, you want to make sure that you're consuming a balanced diet that includes some of each macronutrient. Your body absolutely needs these macronutrients in order to function properly. Without sufficient amounts of macronutrients, you might find yourself having some nutritional deficiencies, maybe being more tired than usual, struggling to reach your fitness goals, etc. We all know by now, whether or not we want to admit it, that nutrition is the foundation of making progress along our fitness journeys. Whether we want to lose weight, build muscle, gain weight, or a combination of these things, what we eat matters. So then, it's important to know what you are consuming so that you can reach your fitness goals as efficiently as possible. Otherwise, without tracking your macros, often you just go into your fitness journey blind without much direction, and it can make it more difficult for you to achieve your goal. Should you count or track your macros? Whether you want to track your macro intake or not, it's completely up to you. Some people enjoy counting their macros, but for others, it drives them absolutely crazy. I personally recommend tracking your macros if you are just beginning your fitness journey and have a specific goal you want to reach in X amount of time, as long as it doesn't harm your mental and emotional health. I know that you probably see many of your fitness influencers you follow, intuitive eat, or something of the sort where they don't count their macros, which is possible to do and still see results, but you have to also understand that many of them are able to do so successfully because they started out counting their macros for probably years before they began eating intuitively. You gotta crawl before you walk. Again, whether you should or shouldn't track your macros is completely up to you. If you want to, go for it, but if you don't, then don't. So how to count or track your macros? The easiest way to track your macros is by using an app such as MyFitnessPal or LifeSum. These apps come with an endless nutrition label library that includes the majority of foods that you can buy at the store. You take a food, scan the tag, and boom. The app pulls up all the nutritional information for that food. You can also adjust the amount of each food you scan so that it matches what you actually consume. Or if it doesn't have a nutrition label, you can search within the app Honeycrisp Apple or Celery or Brownie or something and choose one of the options that comes up easy peasy. Today, we will not be going over how to use a macro tracking app, but if you have any questions about how to use one, go to YouTube and search how to use my fitness pal or how to use life and there will be many helpful videos made by many fabulous people that you can watch and learn from. You can do it. I believe in you. So how do you track your macros without an app? If you're not up for using an app to track your macros, then you're likely to have to be writing down the macros from the nutrition label for every food you eat in a notebook or something of the sort. Even then, for foods that don't have a nutrition label, you're probably still going to have to look it up online or something. Or just guess. 
And we haven't even gotten to the most difficult part of not using an app to track your macros. If you track macros without an app, you would literally have to look at a chunk of ground beef and know the macros for it if it's 80% lean or 83% lean or 90% lean or 95% lean. They're not all the same just because they're all ground beef. You'll have to look at a piece of chicken and just know the macros because a chicken breast has different macros than a chicken thigh or a drumstick. They're not all the same just because they're all chicken. You'll have to look at a cut of steak and just know the macros for if it's a ribeye or a tomahawk or a filet or a New York strip or a chuck roast. They're also not all the same just because they're all beef. They will each have significantly varying amounts of fat. Listen, tracking your macros manually without an app is a lot of work and it's gonna take some freaking superpowers to just look at a food and know what its nutritional value is. Therefore, I urge you to make your life easier. Please just use an app. You don't have anything to prove to anyone. I must also inform you that food weighs more when it is raw versus when it is cooked. So when you're putting food into your app, keep this in mind and pay close attention to the nutrition label because it will often say if that food item is typically cooked, what the nutritional value is when it is either cooked or raw. It will not have the nutritional value for both if the food is cooked and raw. For example, one cup of uncooked rice has completely different macros than a cup of cooked rice. But it will usually always say, with rice anyway, if the nutrition label is for when the rice is cooked or uncooked. So again, please make sure that you are paying close attention to this. But please, let's not go overboard with this, okay? Obviously, you are not going to cook your Cheez-Its, so don't worry about if your Cheez-Its nutrition label is for when it's cooked or straight out of the box. It's not for when it's cooked, I promise. Obviously, you are not, hopefully, going to eat your pizza rolls frozen. So the nutrition label will be for when the pizza rolls are cooked, okay? So let's try to use some common sense here as well. Also, if you're going to be cooking and putting meat into your app, again, please be aware that raw meat weighs more than cooked meat. Any kind of meat, this is true for. So if you're going to cook a steak, it might weigh eight ounces raw, but then about six ounces after you cook it. So make sure that whatever you put into your app, it is measured correctly. You don't want to measure it after you cook it, thinking it was only six ounces, when in fact it was actually an eight ounce steak. You see what I mean? You're smart, you'll figure it out. You just gotta make sure that the conversions are correct, that's all. How do I know how many macros I should be eating? It's important to understand that the amount and proportion of macros you should be consuming is completely specific to the individual. No two people will want to follow the exact same macro guidelines, even if they have the same exact end goal. You have to start where you are and go from there. Just because you want to lose weight doesn't mean you should follow these macros, and just because you want to build muscle doesn't mean you should follow these macros. There is no single macro split or amount that is amazing and magical when we give every person on this world who has the same goal the same results. The macros you should be following will be completely dependent on where you are starting and where you want to be. And that number is completely different from person to person because everyone starts somewhere different and has different body types and will then require different strategies in order to successfully reach their goal. Listen, if you have a specific goal you want to reach, especially if there's a certain time frame you want to reach it in, I would 110% recommend you getting a customized nutrition plan from a registered dietitian, nutritionist, or simply someone who has a professional background in nutrition and fitness. It's always going to be easier to have someone who has experience crunch the numbers for you and tell you exactly how much food and what kind of food you should be eating in order for you to reach your goals rather than go through trial and error after trial and error trying to figure it out yourself. But I know that most people will be stubborn and won't do that. So the next best thing you'll want to do is go to Google and search macro calculator. Pick a macro calculator, any macro calculator. Fill in the questions they ask and boom, they'll calculate your macros for you. Or if you're using a food tracking app, they'll most likely have a macro calculator in the app already that computes how much you should be eating as well. Please keep in mind that these macro calculators are not always accurate, which is why I would recommend biting the bullet and paying someone who can do it for you. Things such like dietary restrictions or simply personal preference can also influence a person's macros. For example, someone who is following a keto diet won't want to consume high amounts of carbs and someone who is on a low fat diet will of course want to be consuming a low amount of fats, therefore affecting how much they consume of each macro. If a weight gain or muscle gain or a combination of weight and fat loss plus muscle building aka body recomposition is your goal, please check out my how to gain weight slash build muscle videos that I will have linked below that will give you more insight about macros for that specific goal. But if weight loss is your goal, please stay tuned for this upcoming Monday where I will take you step by step through how to set up a meal plan. Thank you very much. 
Please save all your weight loss questions for Monday where I will likely answer them in that video. Thank you very much. I would also like to mention that there are no specific foods you should be eating to fulfill your macros. How you want to meet your macros is completely up to you. You can eat McDonald's every day if you want to, or you can make every single one of your meals by hand with homegrown ingredients, or get your meals delivered to you by a meal prep company. There's really no right or wrong way to fulfill your macros. The only wrong way is by eating foods that are not enjoyable for you because your Fitspo is doing it, or you think you need to eat these foods in order to see progress. I promise you that there is a way that you can meet your goals while still eating good Good, delicious satisfying foods and not completely cutting out foods but if you want to utilize a stricter meal plan by all means do so again there are no specific foods you need to eat in order to meet your macros you can fulfill your macros however you wish to whether it's fast food every day or home cooked meals simply just put in whatever you want to eat in your food tracking app and if it fits your macros you're good to go it really can be as simple as that if you let it but I would recommend inputting your meals into your food tracking app before you eat them the day before or planning your meals in advance. That way, you know that every day you'll be on track to hit your macros and reach your goals. However, if you're just flying by the seat of your pants every day and don't plan ahead, then you might eat two Cinnabons for breakfast, use up half of your carbs and fats for the day, and not be left with much more to work with later during the day. So. Do yourself a favor and if you're feeling like Chick-fil-A for dinner tomorrow night, and put a spicy chicken deluxe into your food tracking app to see how you can make it fit into your macros for the day. Always remember that a failure to plan is a plan to fail. So what do macros and calories have to do with each other? Every macronutrient holds a caloric value. One gram of protein has four calories, meaning that for every one gram of protein that you eat, you are also consuming four calories. One gram of carbs has four calories, meaning that for every one gram of carbs that you eat, you are consuming four calories. One gram of fat has nine calories, meaning that for every one gram of fat that you eat, you are consuming nine calories. Therefore, if you're tracking your macros and hitting them pretty consistently, that means you should also be hitting your caloric goals consistently. However, the opposite is not true. Just because you are hitting your caloric goal for the day doesn't mean you're getting all your targeted macros in. This is because your macros can be divided into a million different ways. For example, if your goal is to eat 2,000 calories a day, you could divide your macros like this. 40% of calories to protein, which would be about 200 grams of protein and 800 calories. 30% of calories to carbs, which would be about 150 grams of carbs and 600 calories. And the remaining 30% of calories to fats, which would be about 67 grams of fat and 603 calories, which all equals to roughly about 2,000 calories. Or you could divide them like this. 50% of calories to protein, about 250 grams of protein, about 1,000 calories, 10% of calories to carbs, about 50 carbs, 200 calories, and then the remaining 40% of calories to fats, about 89 grams of fat, 801 calories, which all equals roughly to about 2,000 calories. Or you could also divide them like this. 35% of calories to protein, which would be 175 grams of protein, 700 calories. 55% of calories to carbs, about 70, 275 carbs, uh, 1,100 calories. 10% of calories to fats, about 22 grams of fat, 198 calories, which again all equals about 2,000 calories. You see, there are a million and one ways to divide your calories and macros, none of which are really right or wrong. At the end of the day, you want to split them in a way that works best for you and your body. However, it may take some time to figure out a good split for you. Do some experimenting with different splits and see what you like best. If you're unsure about where to start, a standard split would be a 40-30-30 split, where 40% of your daily calories goes to carbs, 30% to protein, and then 30% to fats. So again, you can hit your macros and still be on track with your calories, but just because you hit your calories doesn't mean you have hit your macros. Lastly, let's go over some common mistakes and misconceptions. One is following the macros or calories of your Fitspo. It wouldn't make any sense for someone from Ireland to book the same flight to go to Cuba as someone from the US. Even though the person from Ireland and the person from the US want to go to the same place, they need to book completely different flights in order to reach their destination. In the same way, even if you have the exact same goal as someone else, it wouldn't make any sense for you both to have the exact same meal plan since you two are starting in a completely different place. Work smarter, not harder. Start where you are and go from there. Again, we will talk about weight loss on Monday. Please remain patient until then. I promise it'll be worth it. Thank you very much. Two, eating fats makes you fat and eating carbs makes you fat. That is completely wrong. Whether you gain or lose weight has much more to do with how many calories you're eating rather than the types of macronutrients you're eating. As we've already established earlier, you can reach the same caloric goal with a million and one different macro splits. Eating fat does not make you gain weight and eating carbs will not make you gain weight. Literally, if you were to take a bottle of oil and drink it, 
it would not make you gain weight. It would only make you gain weight if you are in a caloric surplus already. You can eat bread all day, every day, and it will not make you gain weight. It will only make you gain weight if you are in a caloric surplus. It is possible to gain weight from eating healthy food. Yes, if you eat too much healthy food, healthy food, and it puts you in a caloric surplus, you will gain weight. Gaining weight comes from being in a caloric surplus, not from eating certain foods. A caloric surplus means that you're eating more calories than you are burning or burning less calories than you are eating. Losing weight comes from being in a caloric deficit, not from eating certain foods. A caloric deficit means that you're eating less calories than you are burning or burning more calories than, than you are eating. If you want to eat a low fat or carb diet just because that's your own personal preference, that's completely fine. I'm just here to say that it is completely unnecessary to cut off fats and carbs if you enjoy eating them. You can still eat fats and carbs and still reach your goal. I also want to make sure that you understand that your macros are a guideline, not a restriction. Again, your macros are a guideline, not a restriction. If you go over your macros one day, it's okay. If you go under your macros another day, it's okay. Literally, it's okay. You are not destined to fail or not make progress if you do not follow your macros to a T every single day. Say it with me. It is okay to not hit my macros perfectly every single day, and if I don't, I will not punish myself the next day. Food is my friend, not my enemy. And if I sometimes fall off track, it is not the end of the world. My comeback will be stronger than my setback. Food is my friend, not my enemy. I will always try my best and I will not punish myself for not being perfect. Food is my friend, not my enemy. Thank you for hanging out with me today, friends. I hope you learned something of value today. And if you did, please click that thumbs up button and share this with someone who would also find this helpful. As you guys know, stay tuned for this Monday for my release of my step-by-step -step weight loss guide here on YouTube if you are interested in losing weight. If you don't want to miss out on that video, it's as easy as clicking that subscribe button and then turning that notification bell on. For daily fitness and workout tips, follow me on Instagram and like me on Facebook. That is all for today, guys. If we talk any longer, my head will explode. Have a spectacular weekend and please remember that your macros are a guideline, not a restriction.